You're about to watch a free five minute sample of a live training video. At the end of the video, I'll tell you where to watch the whole thing or just scroll down for more info. I'll see you in five minutes. To a single, well, to two colors, single color, black and white, basically a one bit, um, one bit image. And the radius, it's kind of a, how do you describe this? How close to the other, how much the pixels are gonna to blend together. So one pixel, how far away does another pixel have to be before it blends in with that one? That would be your radius. And so the more you drag it up, the less recognizable, the more mush things mush together. All the way down, it is, that's interesting. It doesn't actually load up when I go all the way. Oh, because it's zero. It probably have to be at something. Or maybe it's just so fine that it's all mushing together. Interesting. A little bit too fine. That makes sense. Radius is zero. Just makes it all a big gray blob. But if we look at a small radius, you get a lot of fine detail in there, but you probably would be more likely to kind of chunk it up a little bit. And if we start, you know, this is kind of cool. Let's stack a couple things. Let's go for the comic look and then add a litho on top of that, which is going to thicken up those lines. Let's take the blending down and we can hide that. And so, well, maybe that's not so good. Yeah, okay, maybe I lied. It's not such a cool feature. I thought that might be kind of a neat blend. Well, we're finding a place where it kind of blends together. Gives you something interesting. I still think the comic with the invert is pretty cool. So let's get rid of that comic, just hide that, and you can see the, the effect of that. And the blending it with the original footage in there too. Cool, cool, cool. All righty, uh, let's delete that, what's next? Edge work, which I think is just another litho. Yep, another litho preset, so edge work and pop art. So again, just giving you different amounts of presets in there. And if we play that back, you can see what that's going to look like. It's kind of neat, honestly, I think. All right. Uh, the abstract litho mix. Oh, there's more. So abstract, super abstract, litho mix blending in with something underneath, edge mix blending in with something underneath. So that's just bringing more blend in. So again, that is just the same filter effect, getting a bunch of different presets. All right. And then we get into weird color things. Old red. Let's get rid of the uh, previous filters so we see exactly what's happening in here. There we go. Old red. So old red, what is this doing? This is adding a tint, a tint to the shadows. It's kind of like a duotone from the looks of things. So we could say, Let's make this, um, I don't know, blue in the shadows and lights. Let's go yellow. We could choose a preset from the yellow there. And then you can blend that in between as well. So yeah, it's a duotone. Duotone, and you've got your eyedropper here so that you can um, pick a color, which let's see here. If I click and drag that right, click and drag that. Although if you wanted to pick a color from the scene, you would have to first take the blending all the way to one. Seems like it should be the other way. One and then grab the eyedropper. Remember to get the eyedropper, you tap and drag. So let's drag the blue from the sign there and we'll drag the red from the sign here. There's our colors. Now there's the duotone that we just made, which is obviously awful. Maybe we should, uh, how can we choose that up a little bit? Make it a little bit hard, a little bit easier to see. I don't know, is that cool? Not really. But there you go, duotones. If you wanna do duotone, that's how you do the duotone. Christmas, it's just a duotone again with different colors. Blue, blue duotone, cool, duotones. Duotones, essentially reverting your image to black and white to grayscale and adding a ramp from uh, the darkest to the lightest, one color to a second color. That's essentially what that is. So your darkest colors will get assigned the dark tint and your brightest colors get assigned the bright tint and anything in between gets whatever the gradient says it is um, in between. Bloom, now we're getting into some blurry softening kind of effects. Excuse me, I need to, um, oh, I don't have any water there. Oh, all out of water today. I just came back from a shoot. I've been running around all morning. I ran in here like five minutes before the show started, so hence the... Uh, um, bloom. Bloom is giving us a nice glowy effect. This can be kind of nice. I like bloom effects. I think that if you combine a bloom, if you start to layer things, maybe a little transparency between it, so you have a blooming soft effect, but you have your sharp effect underneath, um, that, is, uh, that is called an Orton effect. I think that's right. And it can be a very nice effect, especially if you want to make things look a little bit dreamy, but you don't just want to make it blurry. That's what you can do with these kind of blooms. And this one, it looks like it's actually holding on to a lot of the sharpness uh, already, but you could definitely layer it with an original source and do a blend and uh, retain some additional sharpening underneath. But that's kind of, a, kind of a fun effect there. So you got bloom, bloom big, and then full on fog. Yeah, I don't know if I'd buy that. That really looks like fog, but there you go. And then you have gloom, which is the opposite of bloom, apparently, where it is, let's get rid of the fog, let's get rid of that one. So gloom, oh, okay, so it's doing a darkening, same thing, but darkening. So you can see your intensity of that. It's, it's like a bloom, but with dark pixels instead of light ones. It's like a good horror film effect. It's kind of, what was that movie in the forest and all shot in black and white with handy cameras, handy, little, something, no, which, which something which, which, which hunt, which, 
Somebody tell me. Um, it could be kind of like that. Do go black and white and do a bit of that effect. It kind of look like that. Uh, photocopy effect. Sure, looks like a photo. You've just watched a five minute sample of a live training video. Head to photojoseph.com slash store to see the rest of it, as well as the other videos in this series, and to sign up as a member so you have access to the ever-growing library of live training courses.